Two teams will rumble, but which one will stumble? It's time to find out who's got the stuff of champions on another episode of... Arena! to Arena, the show that turns multiplayer games into competitive sports. I'm Lee Rearman, and we've got two teams that are about to lock horns in a virtual clash of the Titans. We'll get the ball rolling on the console with War of the Monsters, then take the action to the PC with Unreal Tournament 2003, and finally, we'll bring it on home with our newest game, America's Army Special Forces, which will play on our newest toy from Atlanta Cyberspace. It's a virtual reality pod. We've also amended the law of Arena, so let's go to he who carries a big law book and barks softly. Kevin Pereira. That's right, Lee, and now we've got a new game in the mix, and we've also got some new scoring rules to go with it, so pay attention. There are nine possible points to be won. The console game is worth one point, while PC games are each worth two. Now, the team with the highest accumulated score will also pick up a point, and the team with the MVP will rack up an additional three points. So now let's check in with Stacey Barcelona for our player introduction. Thank you, Kevin. On the last episode of Arena, two teams came in hoping to stake a claim to the vacant Arena throne. Team Minority, on the strength of Cool Spot's dominance in Unreal Tournament 2003, took the match over Team Castaways and was crowned our latest champion. Now, Minority is back hoping to defend its title against a fresh challenger, Team Slapdash. I just moved here from New York, so I just kind of threw the team together of people that I, I work with. So the Slapdash just means thrown together. I used to play Halo a lot. Um, I used to run a tournament. I used to have four Xboxes, four Halos, four TVs. We're going to be swift, we're going to be fast, and we're going to take you down. I graduated high school like two years ago. I've just been working. I love games because that's what I do. I work at a video game store. I actually went to E3 this year, and I met the number one uh, Unreal Tournament player in the world, Jonathan Fatality. I met him, I played against him, and he basically whooped me. But I'm 21 years old. I work at um, Game Crazy. I'm going to school right now. I'm going to get a, my degree in American history. Let's just say my high school grades suffered because of video games. My parents were uh, a little upset, especially during the Final Fantasy um, 8 and 9 games. I chose Monster because when I was a little kid, I liked Cookie Monster a lot. My mom used to call me the Cookie Monster. I play video games because it's sort of like doing something great without doing anything at all. I get to indulge my laziness and procrastinating side, and I also get to play. Cool spot. I got that from the 7-Up logo. I love that little red spot thing. I'm a computer technician. I actually work in the industry. I go to community college, and whenever I get a chance to try to game the most, most I can. Competition, you better watch out. Minority and I, we're going to be coming hunting you down. I met my teammate through school, Clark, Magna High School. We've been gaming since back in the day. I'm a kinesiology major. I should be a sophomore, but I'm still considered a freshman. Kinesiology, it's the um, study of the art and signs of human movement. Been gaming pretty much all my life. Don't have any other real hobbies. Love first person shooters, love RTSs. We hope to win. I mean, you don't come into this thing thinking, oh, I'm gonna lose. I've been playing video games for a long time, since, ever since I had a Nintendo. We used to wake up in the mornings for school, play video games. Been on TV, can play video games? Live stream. All right, we're starting things off here in the console pit. Now all four players from each team will get a chance to make a difference as they'll each take a turn at the game. Today's game is War of the Monsters on the PlayStation 2, and it's paying homage to the campy sci-fi movies of the 1950s. Now this fighter lets players take control of a variety of B-style beasts and go head-to-head -head in a fight to the death. So now that you know the setup, let's get to the action. What? And round one of War of the Monsters is underway. Wild Arms for Minority is Ultra V with Shizo going as Agamo. We've got some melee attacks going on right now. Ultra 5 unloading on Agamo. And Ultra 5 takes one on the chin and that sends him deep into the Atlantic. Notice the blinking boxes on either side of the health bars, Lee. These, both these characters have special moves that they can unleash at any moment. Both of them are pretty much standing toe to toe. And Ultra 5 just taking it to Agamo, who apparently forgot the block button. And Agamo comes back, but not for long. Oh, and rapid laser attacks deplete Ultra 5's energy dizzying him up and allowing Agamo to come in and just land a flurry of blows. Ultra 5 is low on health. Health store Agamo chasing him. Oh, and Ultra 5 takes a projectile to the back and goes down. Two. And round two is underway for Minority. Zero Limits will be playing as Tagera Monster. 
has chosen Kaneta Klops. And Kaneta Klops getting back up after being momentarily knocked down. Pulls a three-hit combo on the oxygen, and Tajera's right there to uh, make him pay for it, Lee. I would think that Kaneta Klops in the water would electrocute someone. Well, that would require three lines of co Lee, and you're shipping under deadlines. Things like that just don't happen. This is like War of the Monsters Gone Wild. They're all wet. And you can see, Lee, again, the blinking boxes reminding these characters they absolutely have no clue how to execute their special moves. Kaneta Klops wails right back, a four-hit combo. Ailey attacks back and forth. And Tajera having recovered somewhat, and Tajera seems to have been awakened. Kaneta Klops is up, he is low on health. Oh, and Kaneta Klops goes down like an arena intern trying to become a host, and that'll do it. Three. And round three is underway here at War of the Monsters. Cool spot for Minority. We're playing as Magmo for Slapdash. It's Ninja and Agamo. You can tell that someone did their homework as they unleashed a special move, Cool Spot, who apparently found the manual inside the case. Cool Spot taking it right to the almost defenseless Agamo. And Ninja doing an excellent job of blocking Lee. Unfortunately, not doing an excellent job of attacking just yet. They're out in the water. Magmo do a little dancing on the head of Agamo. Oh! Taking it to him, hanging in there. Looking at the health bars, Lee, they're both neck and neck. And another two-hit combo sends him into the drink. And Agamo, who early in this round seemed to have no clue what he was doing. It's now becoming the aggressor. Magma turns a corner, but he actually gets knocked into a health power-up. That could help him here if he manages to block. But he does not manage to do that, Lee. And Magma goes down, losing it for Team Minority. Four. Round four is underway. Slapdash with a two-to-one round lead. Magic Stick will be going as Kaneta Klops with Riot disguising himself as Magma. Right off the bat, Lee, neither team wasting any time going right at each other. Oh, and Kaneta Klops lands a Sub-Zero style uppercut, sending him into the drink. Minority does not want to lose this round. Kaneta Klops in hot pursuit. Poor guy has no depth perception. He's one eye. Magmo is down half a bar at this point. And Magmo leaps right over Kaneta Klops. Coming down to the wire in this one. Looks like a rock'em sock'em robot match. Magmo hey, just Klops. unleashes a punishing special move on Kaneta Klops. Kaneta Klops being thrown around like a rag doll. Kaneta Klops is hurting. Kaneta Klops on the retreat. Picks up a semi-truck and stuffs it in the jaw of Magmo. Like the bust in your face. Throws a truck, but might as well be pitching for the Red Sox with aim like that. And Kaneta Klops is out of time and out of energy, Lee. And the War of the Monsters for the newcomer Slapdash was an absolute domination. That's right, Lee, but what we saw last time in the arena was Team Minority coming in and dominating an Unreal Tournament 2003. We'll see if Cool Spot can step it up yet again. And stepping it up right now is Stacy, who is with the man for the moment, Shizo. Thanks, Lee. I'm down here with Shizo from Slapdash, and uh, you have the fastest win, 120. How do you feel about helping your team win the console round? I feel very good about it, and I can't wait to play some more. Can't wait to play some more. We're going to have the chance to do just that. You feeling good about the level of competition for the next two games? Yes, I am. I can't wait to get to play. All right, we got an eager beaver. That's going to wrap it up from here. Lee, back to you. Our newcomer, Slap Dash, slapped and dashed their way to victory at War of the Monsters. But as we all know, Team Minority is just lurking in the shadows waiting for our next game, Unreal Tournament 2003. And later, we'll insert both these teams into hostile territory in America's Army Special Forces. That's all coming up right here, so don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. Now, before the break, we saw Team Slapdash announce its presence with authority as it took the console game three big rounds to one. But if you saw our last show, you know the Team Minority has to be feeling confident heading into Unreal Tournament 2003. Why? Because they kick ass in it. Let's go down to Kevin in the PC ring to get things started. Kevin. Thank you very much, Lee. Yes, the game is Unreal Tournament 2003, and the mode is Capture the Flag. Now, in CTF, each team has a base where its flag resides. And the object of the game is to grab your opponent's flag and bring it back to your own base. Today's map is Double Damage. Now, it's a small map, so we can expect to see plenty of close quarters combat, but be careful, because one false step, you'll be sleeping with the fishes, see? One. And round one of Unreal Tournament 2003 is underway. Slapdash versus Minority. What's going on, guys? Slapdash wasting no time with the communication, Lee. Cool spot right by the flag, Lee. Flag damage it. in hand. Nice and pick up, dude. We've seen this many times before. Minority is excellent at this game. They know it. 
They live it. They love it. Full spot is under fire, though, and he goes down. That's a first. And Slapdash, who took over our console game, they're sticking their claim to this game as well somewhat. The defensive battle so far, both teams being taken out. We're good. Zero limits for Team Minority doing an excellent job defending his flag there. Cool spot for Team Minority. Mows down an enemy in his own base on a killing spree with the flag. I need help, dude. I'm dying fast. Many gun in hand as he makes his way back to his own base. Goes down again. Very exciting, yet little scoring. That's when you know you've got some great players. And Shizzo grabs the flag for Slapdash. Oh! Schizo gets pounced upon. And Monster camps his flag as we go into overtime in Unreal Tournament 2003. Wild Arms using that minigun, mows down a couple members of Team Slapdash. Oh, grabs the flag and takes a rocket to the face. We could be here all night, Kevin. At this point, strategy is out the window. It's going to come down to one man's skill. At this point, I'm willing to give somebody five bucks to alt-tab out of the game and just end this thing. And the flag is grabbed by Shizzo and immediately taken down, and Wild Arms for Minority grabs it. Wild Arms for Team Minority has managed to take the flag further than anybody we've seen before. Come on, guys. Get midway to me. Backtracking his way back to base. No teammates in sight. I'm not going to make it. Wild Arms for Minority, and he oh, goes down. Wild Arms dropping the flag. At the same time, Lee, we've got Cool Spot with the flag on his way back out. Rocket launcher in hand, full shields, full health. Go, 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 go. Go. Cool spot on his way back to base. He's got a teammate escorting him. If he places it, they win. Oh! And there it is. Cool spot for Minority Woo! wins the game. Two. And round two of Unreal Tournament 2003 is underway. We had Minority deep into overtime, pull out a squeaker. Cool spot wastes no time using that translocator to enter Slapdash's base from up top. Cool spot for Minority grabs a flag. Get Heavy out. fire, dude. Three of them. And Cool Spot with minigun in hand, strafing, double jumping, doing anything he can to avoid that rocket fire. He's at about half health. Where are you? Cameron. Excellent teamwork between Cool Spot and Magic Stick. Magic Stick coming out to draw fire away from Cool Spot. And guess what he allowed for? And out of the shoot, Cool Spot. We got it, we got it, so. And Magic Stick dropping in, picking up the flag for Team Minority. We touted this as Minority's game. Right now, Magic Stick and Cool Spot and the boys say, hey, this is our game. Oh, get him, get him, get him, get him. So far, it looks like Team Slapdash has fallen apart. And Gizzo for Team Slapdash with the flag. Oh, and the link gun sends him to his knees. Sending Shizzo to the shower. Oh, Magic Stick showboating. A little dirty dancing before he caps the flag. Slapdash having shown no offensive prowess whatsoever here in round two. And Magic Stick grabs the flag yet again for Team Minority. Minigun seems to be the weapon of choice for many flag bearers of Team Minority. Anyone there? All right, we got it. In about two to three seconds here, we will see a flag capture. One, two, hey, what do you know? Three to nothing, it'll just about do it. Time running down, no overtime here. Three. And round three is underway. So far, it has been all Minority. Checking my statistics, Flat Dash held the flag approximately eight seconds in all of last round. Well, Lee, your numbers sure don't lie. But I do. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Let's go, let's go. Well, Giza for Team Slapdash is in the base already, Lee. Grabbing the flag and taking on two members of Team Minority. He held that flag 3.7 seconds. But and Cool, cool Spot, Spot, who's held it for much longer than that here, runs away with it so far. Cool Spot's been known to hold on to it for extended periods of time, Lee. That's why he's the MVP in your book. Coming in, baby. And Cool Spot plants one for Team Minority. Round three is off to more of the same ugliness for Slapdash. Magic Stick grabs a big old keg of health, flag in hand, making his way back to base. Has a teammate there to draw fire for him. And Magic Stick, seemingly all alone, round three quickly turns into a chin up and lead for Minority. Spank him, dude, spank him. You know, base defenders are often the unsung heroes in CTF, but Zero Limit Man doing an excellent job defending his team's base. Kind of like an offensive lineman. And Cool Spot behaving like a tailback, running away in the open field, captures the flag, plants it. It's three to nothing in a hurry, and this is turned into a rout. Good news here, Lee. I don't think we'll see overtime in this round. And Slapdash, all but non existent here in rounds two and three. Round three, well in hand. An unreal tournament. We talked about it being Minority's game. A close call in round one, but after that, as advertised. That's right, Lee. And the base defenders are the unsung heroes of this game, but zero limit was the reason that Minority was able to shut out their team all three rounds. Excellent job. And I'll bet you, Stacy's with a guy named Zero Limit right now. Stacy. Thanks, Lee. I'm here with Zero Limits from Team Minority. Defensive player, how do you feel that your team called you the heart of the team? I'm touched, but even if I'm the heart of the team, heart is nothing without the rest of them. Fair enough. Spoken like a poet. 
Now I'm seeing a pattern develop here. You lose the console game, you kick some butt at UT 2003. You looking for a repeat of last episode? Definitely. We're not here to lose. We're here to win. They're here to win. Lee, back to you. Well, it looked like Team Minority was coming apart of the seams early in that game, but they quickly stitched things up and rolled to a three rounds to none victory. But this match is far from over, as we'll send these guys to battle in America's Army Special Forces. That's up next on Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Now, before the break, Team Minority started out slowly, but quickly warmed up and put on an exhibition in Unreal Tournament 2003. Now, that was no surprise. But let's see what surprises are in store for us in America's Army Special Forces as we head over to Sergeant Hansen for the briefing on today's mission. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Sergeant First Class Hansen, and this is your brief for the rescue mission. Enemy conducted an ambush this morning. They injured one of the key leaders of the resistance. That resistance leader was able to escape and went to a neutral hospital in between enemy and friendly lines in order to get treatment. Your mission is to infill into this area, proceed to the hospital where you can enter through the lower or upper levels or through the garage and make contact with the resistance leader. You are then to escort him out of the building to the helipad where you'll be exfilled. You must ensure that you do not injure any civilians or any staff in the hospital. Are there any questions? No, sir. Good luck. Team Minority was chosen to go first, and the team is suiting up right now. And once these virtual soldiers are ready, they'll have 10 minutes to meet their objective. Now, our players will be immersed in the ultra-realistic environment of America's Army Special Forces through the use of Atlantis Cyberspace's virtual reality pods. Well, it looks like Team Minority is in position, so let's see how they do. And America's Army is underway. First up, Minority. Cool spot, the captain. Right, Slayer, I'm going in right. Cover me. And they're talking as if they've been here before. Well, that's right, Lee, but last time they were here, they absolutely sucked, so hopefully they're going to change their ways. I hear lots of fire breaking out, Lee, and I don't see a whole lot of strategy. A bad guy having apparently gone down at the hands of Magic Stick. Hey, whoa, whoa, camera, camera. I'm coming, I'm coming. Come back. Communication's key, but sometimes these teams seem to scream and yell a little bit too much, and no one listens to each other. Go, come to the behind the truck. Magic Stick and company using that Hummer for a cover as they spot a member of the opposing force. Oh, and a well-placed frag grenade takes out a member of the op force. It's excellent arm on zero limits, Lee. And remember, all those kills earn points. Hey, hey, hey! You moron! Oh, Wild Arm walks out in the middle of friendly fire, I believe. Cool Spot is in prison, and Wild Arms is deceased. Damn it, again? <laughs> Bull These soldiers are cursing like sailors, Lee. Magic stick and zero limits. They've entered that hospital now. Despite the dilapidated condition of the building, Lee, those automatic glass doors still open. Zero limits, covering a hallway in the cover of that smoke grenade. With that smoke, it's somewhat difficult to navigate these hallways. All right, go. Just... Well, the VIP was expecting a four-man rescue squad, so that's got to be a nick in his confidence. Oh, only half of you made it to save me. Well, that's kind of good. Magic Stick and Zero Limits set their sights on a member of the opposing force. And Zero Limits drops him. I got you back. And they've reached the VIP, but now it's time running out. They need to navigate their way back out of the hospital to the helipad. And notice, Lee, with the quick and pace, they're taking less time to check the rooms. They are not leaning around corners, making sure areas are clear. They are just running wild. Magic stick, zero limits, the VIP in tow, making their way outside. Go, 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 hop, go, go. Oh, Lee, they are just bum-rushing the helipad. As the sounds of the gunshots ring out, they did not clear the area before slapping the VIP on the ass and telling them to just run for it. That's it. And they reached their objective. Yeah! yeah. That's right! Either they missed the wake-up call or they like suspense, but Team Minority, once again, off to a slow start. That's right, Lee. A little bit of team killing early on, but Minority pulled it out in the end. They secured all of their objectives, and they eliminated the entire opposing force. Well, now the bar is very high for those getting strapped in right now. Slapdash. And Slapdash will have their shot here in America's Army with Shizo as the team captain. As always, communication is going to be key. Well, if communication is key, someone better call a locksmith, because these guys are not chatting effectively. Riot with the RPG launcher on his back. And they spot an enemy force up top. There's one guy in the, in the window. And there we see Shizzo taking aim against the enemy up in the window. And a smoke grenade has been tossed, giving Team Slapdash a little cover in that open area. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, and Shizzo standing beside the truck for cover. I'd have gone with behind it. The Shizzo has been eliminated. 
We see Ninja for Team Slapdash standing below a window, and something's peeking out up there, Lee. Riot unleashes a rocket-propelled grenade into the window. Excellent shot. He takes out a member of the opposing force. Where are you guys at? OK, I see you over there. Who's over in the corner? And Ninja learned Schizo's lesson. He's prone behind that truck. Making no aggressive move toward that hospital. VIP might as well order a pizza and just hang out. He's not getting any help anytime soon. Monster, slow down, slow down. Ninja providing cover for Monster, asking him to slow down so we can back him up. So the enemy fire seems to have subsided. And some more good news, they have now entered the hospital. First monster, then ninja. So bad for Skizzle over there. He looks like he's in timeout. I'm sorry, buddy. That's, that's got to suck. Team Slapdash throwing caution to the wind here, Lee. Not bothering to check around corners. But they cannot seem to locate that VIP. Maybe the VIP could whistle or jump up and down, do something to attract their attention. All right, all right, we got fire, we got fire, we got fire. And Monster opens up fire on a member of the opposing force here. Ninja's got the right idea. Crouching and using that wall for cover. Someone go forward. Someone pull forward. I got your cut. Monster takes out a member of the opposing force as a smoke grenade goes off. Firefight breaks out momentarily. They're standing out in the open. Monster switches to a grenade and swoops in to get a better look at the opposing force member, and down he goes. Did you get him? Did you get him? The Riot Ninja only remain. The VIP is beyond their grasp, and there it is. Team Slapdash used a methodical approach to the mission. But it looked like the 10-minute time limit did them in as they failed to even locate the VIP, let alone save them. This round goes to Team Minority. And earlier in Unreal Tournament 2003, Team Minority shut Flapdash out, taking eight flags to none for the two-point win. And that was a big relief for Minority, which had its collective clock cleaned by Slapdash in our console game, War of the Monsters. Minority takes the bonus point for the highest accumulated score, which only leaves the MVP selection winning his wand. And taking home his honor is the Magic Man, Magic Stick. Magic Stick! Stacy's with them and all his friends. Thanks, Lee. I'm here with Magic Stick, your first MVP, second win for your team. How you feeling? I'm feeling really great. I'm just really happy we won twice. Really surprised. I have to ask you though about America's Army. You personally weren't responsible for shooting your teammate. Would you have done anything different in that game? Yeah, just tell Carmen to sit back, chill, and don't shoot people. Any advice for the next team who comes to try and knock you off the reigning champion status? Good luck. Good luck, he says. Lee, back to you. Congratulations to you, Team Minority. Now, you may not have had the touch on the consoles, but they were more powerful than Midas in Unreal Tournament 2003. Now, they've ridden that strategy to two straight wins. So be sure to tune in next time on Arena, and we'll see if Minority can move one step closer to the Hall of Champions. Until then, for Kevin Pereira, for Stacey Barcelona, I'm Lee Rearman, and we'll see you next time on Arena. Well, now that you've seen the competition, we want to see if you've got the stuff of champions. So if you're at least 18 years of age and live in or near the Los Angeles area, then throw your hat into the ring by going to our website. Visit us at g4tv.com slash arena and sign up to compete on the show that turns multiplayer video games into a competitive sport. And we will see you in the arena.